I'd like to uh, I'd like to entertain a motion uh, and a second for the acceptance of the agenda. <clears throat> so moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, Board Secretary, could you call the roll, please? Board Member Hedrick. Aye. Board Member King. Aye. Board Member Basili. Aye. Chair Panessa. Aye. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Uh, next item um, is uh, public comment. This, uh, this time is set aside for members of the public to address the board on items of general interest within the subject uh, matter jurisdiction of this board. Um, if somebody wishes to speak, they have three, they will uh, have three minutes um, for each speaker. And although though the board uh, uh, values your comments, pursuant to the Brown Act, this board cannot take action on anything that's not on the posted uh, published agenda. Testimony for hearings will only be taken at the time of each of those hearings. Uh, board Secretary, can you please begin the public comment period? Yes, I have no registered speakers at the moment, but if anyone is present in the room and would like to give public comment, uh, please begin by stating your name. I see no hands, Chair. Thank you. All right, uh, moving on. The next item, item number three, is the appeal of the permanent ineligibility to operate a vacation rental in the city of Palm Springs and the administrative fine of $5,000 for operating an unregistered vacation rental property located at 200 East Racket Club Road, number four. Uh, Board Secretary, could you please ensure that the city staff and the appellant understand that their testimony is under oath? Um, chair, <clears throat> just as a point of order, if we don't have a, we don't have a quorum, what do we? We do. We, we do. do. Have a quorum. Okay, great, awesome. Uh, Mr. Moses is with us now, so we have uh, we have the full board. I apologize. I had no knowledge of this meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, can we continue, please? City staff appellants and any other individual who chooses to testify under this appeal hearing. Under the laws of perjury, if you choose to speak, you hereby accept and acknowledge that your testimony shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, city staff, at this time, could you please present your report? Yes, good evening. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, Board Members, um, City Staff. Uh, citizens on the call. Uh, my name is Patrick Clifford with the Department of Special Program Compliance, and we over, oversee the vacation rental compliance within the city of Palm Springs. Uh, in a staff report uh, in front of you this evening is uh, for a property regarding uh, 200 East Racket Club Road Unit Number 4 here in Palm Springs. It was found that this property was uh, operating as a vacation rental without a registration certificate. Uh, the investigation from a code compliance officer um, found uh, which the elements are listed in the staff report that there was a violation and a citation was issued on July 8th, 2021. The code officer that conducted uh, the investigation is on the call this evening and I would like to invite code officer Williams to um, give testimony regarding that uh, investigation. Thank you. Dave, we cannot hear you.
Doesn't look like you're muted, but. I show Code Officer Williams rejoining the room in just a moment. Okay, thank you. Sorry, everybody. Just a little bit of tef little technical difficulty. He's connected. <clears throat> Go ahead whenever you're ready, Dave. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. No, I, I apologize for that. On July 6, 2021, a lead was submitted through the Department of Special Program Compliance website that reported a listing on VRBO that was not in compliance. The lead also included a link to the advertisement and the advertisement number is 2300639 on VRBO. And that is located on page 25 of item three in your packets. The ad has a minimum stay requirement of 21 nights and is described as a three bedroom, two bathroom condo that was purchased from the original owner and recently underwent a six month renovation. At that time, I sent a booking inquiry to the property host, Mr. Ty Jackson. In the inquiry, I asked Mr. Jackson if the home was available for the dates of September 1st through September 22nd. As my husband and I, along with family members, were going to be in Palm Springs to visit family members. That's item three, page 38 in your packets. The following day, Mr. Jackson replied, hi, yes, it is available. I will block out the entire month to allow for cleaning and maintenance when you depart. Feel free to book for the dates you need. Let me know if you have any questions. All the best, Ty. I responded shortly thereafter with, thank you so much for getting back to me, Ty. I just want to make sure that I am not going to be charged for the entire month as we are only going to be there for 21 nights. Please let me know so I can book it. Thank you, Dave. Mr. Jackson responded after with, yes, it is. It would be for 21 days. I'll block out the rest of the rest to be compliant with our HOA and allow for cleaning and maintenance after you depart. All the best, Ty. At that time, as Mr. Jackson stated, he would rent the property for 21 days and only block up the remaining time to satisfy his HOA, I issued citation AB0336 to the property owner, Mr. Jackson, and I am available for any questions you may have. Anything additional from the city? Nothing additional, thank you. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we'll open it to the board to ask questions of the city. Why don't we start with Mr. Hedrick? I'd like to ask a question of the city council. Um, he's blocking out 30 days. So he is in compliance with his, uh, uh, his, uh, leap, his uh, condo CCNRs. Uh, so is he in compliance with the city rules? And two, what happens if a what happens if I rent something for 30 days and at the 25th day the person leaves? Am I still renting for 30 days, even though the person's not there for five days? I think that's where I, I'm slightly confused. Was that a question for me? Yes. Um, um, I think with regards to the to the HOA and blocking it out, I I don't know what the HOA rules are, but I assume that it's um, you know that they don't want rentals less than um, thirty days or whatever their their standard is. So. I'm not sure that that would be compliant with that. And the same goes for, for our code. Um, we certainly don't want people to, you know, sign a month long lease, but then in reality, they're only gonna be there for three weeks. That's not the intent. Um, that would be considered a short-term 
uh, rental under the ordinance. Okay, thank you. No <laughs> other questions. All right, um, uh, Vice Chair King. Just for the sake of clarity, so <clears throat> because this person didn't, I mean, would it be compliant if they signed a 30 day agreement and then left early? Because you can't make people stay even if, I mean, they would have to sign a 30 day agreement and pay for a 30 day agreement. Is that right, Jill? Yeah, that's my understanding. It would be, you know, if to definitely sign on for the 30 days, pay the 30 days. And um, of course, you know, we can't really, we don't really know what's going to happen with the tenant. They might have a, you know, some kind of emergency or need to leave for whatever reason. Um, so I'm, I assume that that does happen sometimes. I just don't know if that's what happened here. Okay, that's all. <clears throat> Mr. Vasily? Uh, no questions. Mr. Moses? No questions. Okay, so um, I have one question. Um, uh, uh, Patrick or David, uh, Dave, uh, do we know, does, uh, so I guess maybe he's already answered this, is I assume this HOA only allows 30 days? We don't have an answer for that. I assume that it's 30 days and that is only because we don't have any other registered rental units in that condominium complex. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Uh, if there's no more questions from the board for the city, um, at this time, we'll like to open up the appeal hearing. The appellant is invited to speak for up to 10 minutes. Any members of the public who desire to speak on this appeal hearing shall have up to three minutes to speak. And if a member of the public chooses uh, to testify, the appellant will be invited to provide a rebuttal for up to an additional two minutes. Uh, Board Secretary, can you please begin the public testimony period? Chair sure, Penn, I'm sorry, I have no registered speakers, but if the appellant is present in the room and would like to give testimony, you may do so now. I am, yes. And I, I apologize, you guys, I just got diagnosed with a bad chronic lung condition, so I'm on a nebulizer, so my voice is a little weak, but, um, but I have to apologize for being naive in all of this. I own long-term rentals in Washington and they're all 12 months and greater. The HOA here does enforce 30 day or greater stays. And um, I misinterpreted that as being that that could be one set of guests within 30 days. Um, and, you know, and you couldn't book additional guests. So that's why in the dialogue that I had with the compliance officer um, that I, I knew that I had to book it out for 30 days. And so I completely misinterpreted that and you know, have since you know, done a significant more amount of research. And I'm actually in the condo now and I've removed all advertising and I don't plan to um, ever rent it out again. And, and, uh, um, and this is gonna be become my permanent residence and this is where I'm receiving uh, medical care at this time. So, I, so I, again, I apologize. I misinterpreted the rules. I knew it was 30 days, but I thought it was just one set of guests per 30 days. Um, not that it had to be a 30 day minimum stay. And that's why I had that dialogue with the compliance officer in the method that I did. So. Mm. Uh, anything further, Mr. Jackson? Um, um, no, no, and I and I apologize, and I know I had to continue from last month. Over no problem. So you guys complying with that? And I'm no, right. no problem at all there. Uh, okay, at this point, uh, then we'll open it up um, to for the board members can uh, have an opportunity to ask you questions. Uh, when I go in the other direction, Mr. Moses. I don't think I have any questions yet. I'm still sure trying to focus on the concept of blocking off 30 days but allowing the person to not to use the entire 30 days. Okay, uh, Mr. Bas about... okay. All right, Mr. Basili? I don't have any questions. Vice Chair Kane? Uh, again, just to iterate, like um, this appeal, this, 
what what, what are you appealing <laughs> exactly? <laughs> yeah. So so I'm appealing the five thousand dollar fine. fine. Yeah, uh, because of and it's and it is truly my misunderstanding. Okay. Of, of the thirty day minimum stay, I didn't realize that they had to stay stay for thirty days. I thought it. Was <laughs> okay. One. Okay. I got you. Thank you. I apologize. Yeah. That's okay. You got it. Thanks. Mr. Hedrick. No questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't <clears throat> believe. I don't think at least at this point I have any as well. Um, okay. So um, if that kind of concludes our public testimony at this time, the uh, board can discuss um, uh, this case uh, before we entertain a motion and vote. Um, if anybody would like to go first, otherwise I'll go in order again. I'll, I'll take a shot. Okay. I think I'd like to know exactly the wording of the statute. Here you've got somebody who thinks he's rented it basically for 30 days and allowing it to be used less. Um, I, that doesn't sound to me like a violation, but it depends on how the wording actually, the specific wording is. So I guess we're asking the council to give us what is the specific wording of the statute. I'm not looking at it. I'm, we've seen it, not looking at it right now. Okay, so the um, definition of vacation rental is a single family dwelling or any portion thereof utilized for occupancy for dwelling, lodging, or sleeping purposes without the owner being present for a period of 28 consecutive days or less other than ongoing month to month tenancy granted to the same renter for the same unit occupancy of a timeshare basis or a condominium hotel as defined in section 91.00.10 of this code. The term vacation <laughs> rental is synonymous with short-term rental and transient use and does not include home sharing. And then um, the section 5.25.040 says that um, to operate a the operation of a vacation rental or home share interest without a vacation rental registration certificate is prohibited. So, so if someone rented for 30 days, but left after five, would that be a violation? I guess I'm yeah, it says that the, the owner has to be present for a period of 28 consecutive days or less. Yeah, I mean, it seems to me they, they've met the requirements of the code. They're just not going to use so, the, the... Uh, My take on it is very different, is that he was accepting a 21-day reservation. The fact that he blocked the calendar... Um, I guess I'm not seeing how that that um, uh, affects the, the the ordinance. That if he would have uh, taken the reservation for 29 days, um, I think that would be different. But this was a 21 day, so it was clearly less than what the city requires and what the the HOA requires. Well, in the dialogue. You've extrapolated that. But if, in fact, the written document was for 29 days, the, with the understanding among them that they're not, you know, they're really only intended to use a 21, I, I think, I don't think that's a violation. Well, so, so, Mr. Moses, that's why I asked that question, because they didn't sign a contract for 30 days. They signed a contract for, or they were going to, or whatever, like, I guess. Uh, the intention wasn't to sign a contract for 30 days. It was clearly a 21 day commitment. Yeah, I think that's, I'm saying the same thing is that as Vice Chair Kane is that the intent was to rent it for 21. Whether you block the calendar for 30 or 60 or 90 is kind of beside the point that the intent was to rent it for 21 days. Well, let's, let's try that another way. 
if the guy said, I'd like to rent it for 21 days, and his response was, I'm not allowed to do that. I can rent you a month. I can rent you 30 days, 29 days. Use it what you want. Use it five days, 20 days. Use what you want. Well, I'll rent it to you. for. So I'd like to see what the lease, what they actually <clears throat> said in their lease. They, they didn't affect it. Yeah. This wasn't like it was the city asking for this. There was no lease affected. Right, and both the city and the appellant have testified that that's not what happened, that the city uh, compliance officer requested 21 days. He accepted 21 days that however long he blocked the calendar for is, I guess, in my mind, um, you know, doesn't it doesn't affect this well, citation. Maybe we can hear again from the city and, and the the appellant. I don't think that is what he said. He said, I want to rent it for 21 days. And the, the appellant said, I can only rent it to you for 30. No, he, so, didn't. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that at all. He no. said, that is fine, but I will block the calendar for 30 days for maintenance and cleaning. I did also mention that to remain in compliance with the HOA 30 uh, days. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You did say that. Yes. I, Uh, Mr. Basili, any comments for discussion? No, I think it's pretty clear. Mr. Hedrick? Yeah, I, I agree with Mr. Basili. It's pretty clear. Okay. Uh, anything else from the board and comments or discussion? Well, it's clear to us, but it may not be clear to the appellant that we don't have the luxury to deal with the fine and not the, like, we have to uphold the whole thing or deny the whole thing. Like, so we don't, we can't parse this the way you're asking. So to us, it's clear, but you, you may not understand that. If we could, I think we would have that discussion, but we're not allowed to do that. Let me, let me try that again, another way. <laughs> if, if, if he'd said the words I used a few minutes ago, I'd like to rent it for 21 days. I can't do that. I can rent it to you for 30 days, but I'll charge you the same as 21. But he Would didn't that have been it. a violation of the statute? But that's not what he said. What? That he might, you know, I guess in my mind, that might be a different situation. Right. Well, uh, he, because he the said, city, the ordinance doesn't, the ordinance is pretty clear. Whatever the amount of money is, is irrelevant. There can be no money exchanged um, and it could still be a violation. The amount of money doesn't matter to the city. What matters to the city is the number of days. And in this case, both the city and the appellant have said it was 21 days. That's clearly in a short-term rental uh, category. Okay, anything else um, for discussion? And if not, I'd like to ask for a motion. I usually make the motion, so I'm not going to make this motion. Mr. I'll Hedrick. make the motion. Uh, I make a motion that we uphold the fine and the uh, uh, restriction on the ability of the person to rent short term in the future. Can we get a second? Or is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you. Board Secretary, can you call the vote, please? Board Member Hedrick. Aye. Board Member Basili. Aye. Vice Chair Kane. Aye. Board Member Moses. No. Chair Panessa. Aye. Motion carries 4-1 to uphold the administrative decision. Uh, so Mr. Jackson, um, just uh, two quick notes. Um, of course, you will get an official notification from the city. Um, I know you had told us that you were actually living in the property. Um, this does not prevent you from renting it long term. And by the city's definition, that is, I believe, greater than 29 nights. So if in the future you want to do it long term, you still have that right. That has not that has not been affected by this at all. Okay. Um, and we just want to make sure you understand that. All right, we're going to move on. Thank you, everyone, for your uh, time and effort on that. We're going to move on to the um, 
Do you guys need me to remain in attendance or? No, you are well, you are free to go. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is item number four. Um, it is the permanent ineligibility to operate a vacation rental in the city of Palm Springs and the administrative fine of $5,000 for operating an unregistered vacation uh, rental property located at 1109 Via Tennis. Uh, Board Secretary, can you please ensure that the city staff and the appellant understand that their testimony is under oath? City staff, appellants, and any other individual who desires to testify under this appeal hearing, under the laws of perjury, if you choose to speak, you hereby accept and acknowledge that your testimony shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please begin your testimony by stating your name. All right, uh, at this time, thank you. Um, and at this time, if we could uh, get the staff report. Hi, good evening, board, uh, chair, vice chair, uh, board members, city staff, uh, appellants on the call this evening. <clears throat> uh, my name is Patrick Clifford with the Department of Special Program Compliance. We oversee the vacation rental compliance here in the city of Palm Springs. Uh, before you this evening is a staff report regarding a property located at 1109 uh, via Tennis in Palm Springs. It was found um, through investigation by a co-compliance officer that this property was operating as a vac short-term vacation rental um, with the elements that are listed in the staff report. A citation was issued on July 29th of 2021. We weren't operating yet. And Code Officer Williams is on the call uh, to further give testimony regarding the investigation. And I'd like to invite him to, um, to uh, speak. Thank you. Good evening, my name is David Williams, Code Compliance Officer with the Department of Special Program Compliance. On July 26, 2021, a lead was received through the Department of Special Programs Compliance website reporting a listing on Airbnb that was not in compliance. The lead also included a link to the advertisement. The advertisement number is 4516-3726 on Airbnb and that is located on page 23 of your packets. The advertisement has a minimum stay requirement of 14 nights and is described as a two bedroom, two bathroom condo. I then sent a booking inquiry to the property host, Susan. In the inquiry, I asked Susan if the home was available for the dates of September 3rd to September 19th, 2021, as my husband and I would be in Palm Springs for our anniversary. That is item four, page 38 in your packet. The same day, Susan replied, hi, Dave, happy anniversary in advance. I don't have it listed, but it's taken up to the sixth. If you can push your start date then and stay longer at the end, it's yours. I'm sorry, but just wasn't on calendar as taken. I'm there for three to four, third, fourth, and fifth, I think is what she meant on your time frame. The place in the complex are stunning and has just about everything you'd want and then some. Pool and jacuzzi is right across the grass. Shopping, restaurants, all very close, but world apart inside complex. Again, so sorry I'm trying to figure out another option, but this is too problematic for the earlier date you requested. Please let me know. Looking forward to hearing back from you. Warm regards and thanks so much for your inquiry, Susan Baraz. I responded shortly thereafter with, hi, Susan, thanks for getting back to me quickly. How would September 11th to 26th work? Our anniversary is on the 18th, so that will work for us. Please let me know, thank you. Susan responded, perfection, it's all yours for that time. I'm so sorry that your earlier dates overlapped with my needing it, but this is great. Sorry, only just saw your message. I'm visiting my daughter and son-in-law and my twin granddaughters as their anniversary and the twins birthday, ninth birthday. My brother and his wife came for dinner. They live in Berkeley, friends from San Francisco stopped by. No one's seen each other for a year and a half except my own kids. So it's been major events every day. I see you're in SF. Maybe you both should stop by as well with a smiley face emoji. Anyway, the condo is yours and I'm so happy you could work it out. I don't know the best way to book except perhaps <clears throat> canceling the original dates and rebooking with the new ones. 
I'll then pre-approve and you'll be set. You're set no matter as of this, as this works out fine. I'll wait to hear back and get you all the info you need. The place is just fantastic and great way to celebrate anniversary or otherwise. Well equipped with everything needed and more, including a work area if you need that too. Thanks so much, Dave. Looking forward to having you stay and enjoy it all. Warm regards, Susan Baraz. At that time, I issued citation AB0345 to the property owner and am available if you have any questions. Thank you. Anything further from the city? Uh, nothing further, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so at this time, uh, we'll open it up for the board members to ask questions uh, of the city. Uh, why don't we start with Mr. Hedrick? No questions. Thank you. Vice Chair Kane. Uh, Mr. Vasili. No questions. Mr. Moses. No questions. Okay. Um, I do have a question. Um, is this, uh, as I was looking through the info, and I apologize, I maybe uh, would have seen it in one of the attachments. Is this a single family house or a condo? This is a condominium complex. And do we know if, does this complex allow short term? It does. We have several in there and it's a 14 night minimum stay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that was all I had for questions. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing. Uh, you said this was a lead. Uh, somebody, so I assume, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, was this like a lead from a neighbor that uh, saw that it was being rented short term? It was from somebody within that community. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, if there's no other questions for the city, um, at this time, I'd like to open the appeal hearing. The appellant will be invited to speak for up to 10 minutes. Any members of the public who desire to speak on this appeal hearing shall have up to three minutes <clears throat> to speak. And if any member of the public chooses to testify, the appellant will be invited to provide a rebuttal for up to two additional minutes. Board Secretary, can you please begin the public testimony period? Chair Panessa, I have no registered speakers, but if the appellant, the appellant is present, you're welcome to begin your testimony now. Yes, hi. Um, I, I have um, listed my condo. This is the first time on Airbnb, but the rules of my complex is the fact that there's a minimum of 14 days. I personally I'm not interested or never have been in a 14 day minimum anyway, but and in fact, I don't even remember this whole thing, but it sounds like what I wrote <laughs> sounds like me. Um, but I only know that they have the rules and regulations of 14 days plus on the listing of the site itself for the Sunrise Racket Club. It also says without any other you know, context with it, 14 day minimum for the complex. That's the listings on people that want to um, look at it for, for buying. What I didn't know and never knew until I actually spoke with Patrick is that you needed to have a, a license or, to, or some kind of certificate that you can rent it for less than that. As far as I know, for the most part, I have not rented it to anyone um, for, for less than 30 days. But as soon as I found out that I needed this certificate, which I never knew that I needed before that, I'm going by the rules of the complex and the rules of what it's listed at online for people that are buying condos in Sunrise Racket Club. And that's what it says without any kind of other, you know, uh, um, clarification of of what I'm I'm uh, what I'm having to do for that. Uh, as soon as I spoke to Patrick, of course, I took it the whole thing. I went back and and eliminated the whole thing for thirty days, um, and I haven't I haven't rented it. Well, I haven't rented it for for, for I haven't rented it last year because I was renovating my kitchen. Um, but this year it's on now for only 30 days. And in fact, I have people staying there for three months at the moment. 
So it's it's my cluelessness that I had to even get another um, what what are, I don't know what you call it um, a, an ID number or a license thing, and I sent away for something um, after I spoke. Um, what was it? A, t a, a vacation rental. A, t a TOT um, for for Palm Springs um, that you have to file for whatever this is this is this is my my um lawyer friend who also sent away for the same thing and it was both returned to both of us it was a 25 dollar fee for filing it um I, does anybody know what i'm talking about at all we um, do. oh okay because uh, i'm i'm um i just got it returned and so did so did you and with a check and enclosed. But what I what I don't want ever again is to do anything that is. First of all, I've never done anything illegal in my entire life. I I'm I follow the books, and I followed unfortunately the wrong book because I followed my complexes rules and not apparently what I didn't know was Palm Springs city rules, and that's the difference. So. That's that's all I have to say. I use this as supplement. I'm I just retired, and this was my my means to to get in some some money. I have I do a lot of things in Palm Springs, and I I think I sent something out that says uh, I'm I'm with this photo the the Palm Springs Photo Festival. It's it's a it's a big event. And, and I'm part of that event. I work with photographers because we really organize something to bring people to Palm Springs, never mind renting, bring people to Palm Springs. And this has been going on since 2006 when we organized it. So I love Palm Springs. I love the idea that I have a place there, um, but this rental 30 days, um, is now listed and it's, as I said, only to supplement my own, um, you know, um, social security. So I'm 79 years old, I need supplements. Um, and that's, that's it. I didn't follow the rules of the city because I didn't know them. And I followed the rules of the complex and that's all um, that, I, that I could say on my part until I got the citation, which, which I didn't even know. And I called also to find out what I didn't understand what I did wrong. And that's the truth. All right. Thank you. Um, anything further? Do you have anything to say? No, oh. that's good. All right, thank you uh, for your testimony. Um, at this point, we'll uh, open it up for the board members to ask the appellant questions. Um, why don't we start with Mr. Moses? I have no questions. Thank you. Vice Chair Kane? Uh, uh, Mr. Basili? Um, <clears throat> Susan, yeah. did, you, did you ever register your property? register my property for is your property registered as a as a as a rental for the city of palm springs if you have it well now i know i didn't even know that you need to register for 14 days that was the problem okay i mean i only know it only after i called to find out why i got a certification but you're still you're still renting it i have on the listing on my Airbnb site, 30 days, okay. m one month only. Right. But only after I found out what was the rules. I didn't know before then. Okay. I, no. I, I actually don't even want it for less than that. I mean, the idea, I'm not a hotel. Um, and I don't want to keep changing people over and I've got no problem if people, you know, 30 days. No, I rented it for three months at a time. Um, okay, but it's still an unregistered rental. No, it's, 
I, I don't I still don't understand if do you if you register it, isn't it because you're doing it for less than 30 days? Yes. You're not doing that. I'm not doing that. Now that I know, I mean, I never, I, I didn't really do it anyway for, for bef before then, but I didn't know that you had to register for 14 days. I went by my complex, which says that is the regulation. It's sure. 14 days or more. Okay. So that's all I knew. Now I understand 30 days and you don't, you don't need to have a registration because I, I, you know, I'm not interested in it anyway. Got it. Okay, thank you. thank you. But I didn't know that before, before the citation came. Got it, thank you. Anything else, Mr. Basili? No, that's it, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hedrick? No questions, thank you. So um, I just, I guess I have a, a, just a couple. Um, had you ever, before this inquiry, had you ever rented it for less than 30 days or 28 I days? I can't. Well, yeah, twenty eight days, but no, I have it listed as a month now. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, as soon as I got the citation and I called up to find out why, I I I canceled whatever the heck. It's on Airbnb. It kind of comes up um, anyway, and I'm not the most astute, by the way, on computers. I'm really good visually. I know a good photograph when I see it, but that's beside the point. I can't remember quite honestly, ever renting it for 14 days, even though I, in my mind, I could have because of my complex, the rules of my complex and the listing on the site as saying that without any other qualification that I needed an ID or a registration or any of those things. Okay. So I um, would have, if I did, if I, I would, I'm not that stupid that I would not comply with with the laws i'm very big on what's right and what's not right and okay I, but to your knowledge you can't remember ever renting it quite for less honestly, no um, but it must have been who said i guess who set the ad up on airbnb was that you i did okay um and so when you set it up you must have set it up so that it would allow for a 14-day minimum be, because it allows it in my complex. That's I understand. the reason I, understand I, I said it, but I don't, I myself personally really wouldn't want that, especially, you know, during like seasons, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, this is going ahead. I never was on Airbnb before this, this, okay. whole, this whole like interim. That, that's okay. the reason it was 14 days on there. All right, thank you. Um, I don't have any additional questions. Um, is there any other uh, questions for the appellant from the board? And if not, then we'll close the public testimony portion. Um, and at this point, the board uh, will discuss. Um, what, what, oh, uh, Mr. Chairman, can, uh, uh, can I have an opportunity, can I have the three minute opportunity to uh, speak on? Um, yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me get into picture oh, here. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, I am a, a dear friend of Miss Barra's. I'm an attorney in Santa Monica. I'm trying to help her out. Uh, she is a dedicated uh, supporter of Palm Springs. Uh, she convinced me to uh, buy a property in the same complex. She has convinced other people to buy properties, not only in this complex, but elsewhere in Palm Springs. She is uh, very humble in describing her activities. She's the principal chair of photography exhibits around the world. She is the principal sponsor and creator of the Palm Springs photo exhibition. She's probably responsible personally for bringing in millions of dollars from people who attend and stay in Palm Springs to uh, attend these yeah, uh, these festival the, these photography festivals which have been going on as you said since 2006. She is a very valuable member of the Palm Springs community as she is here in Santa Monica as well. But uh, I just wanted to bring that to the attention 
of, uh, of the board members. Uh, I can also state that I was unaware of the 28 days until Susan brought the citation to my attention. Um, both of us uh, uh, attempted to register for short-term rentals. I, I saw Mr. Basile ask that question. The, the applications we sent in, by the way, there's no easy way to interpret these, these documents, were returned with our checks. We could not even register for a TOT form, which as you look at the form, the vacation rental registration requires a TOT number. Well, when we tried to do that, it was returned. So there was impossible for us, both of us, to register for a short-term vacation rental, even if we wanted to do that, which we don't. Front. Uh, Susan does not. To, there's, I, I just want to also point out, just as a lawyer, there's no evidence that she actually rented it out short term in this case. There is evidence that she offered it, but no evidence that that ever occurred. So I, I have, I'm sorry, I'll let you finish and then I have a question for That's you. That's what I wanted to say, but I, I just hope that you appreciate Ms. Barris's contributions to the Palm Strings community, which I think have been quite beneficial. Thank you. So uh, my question is this. So when you uh, both applied for a TOT number, which only gives you the um, ability to collect tax, it is not a vacation rental permit. Uh, was that done after this after the citation? Yes, well, yeah, because uh, yeah, we didn't know. Yes, that's correct. So uh, you knew you knew you needed a, a TOT number, but you didn't know you needed a permit. Yes, but the TOT number is a condition precedent of getting the the vacation registration, and if you don't have the TOT number, you can't file for a vacation registration permit. So when we applied for the TOT and that was rejected. There's no way, if you look at the requirements, for you to get a vacation registration for less than 28 days. All right, thank you. Um, so just so we're clear, um, actually, um, uh, what he just said, I do not believe is true. You do not need a TOT number to get a vacation rental. Those get applied for at the same time. And um, the reason it was probably returned, and Patrick, please confirm if this is accurate, that it was returned because you had a citation for an unregistered vacation rental. Not and the city will not process a permit application if there is a citation outstanding for an unregistered vacation rental. Is that correct, Patrick? I just think, sure. It, it's depending on what I'm hearing, um, there could be two avenues that were taken. Uh, the finance website has a TOT permit, um, and our website. Um, for vacation rentals has a TOT permit um, that could be applied for in the process as well as applying for a vacation rental certificate. So if they went to the finance website to apply for a TOT permit, um, that's there because there's also other businesses in the city that use a TOT permit, mm -hmm. small boutique hotels, other hotels, stuff like that, that'd be collecting transit oxygen tax. Um, now, if, if it was, uh, that TOT permit was found on our vacation rental website. Um, there would have been other materials there to, that show this is what's needed to register. Um, and if that TOT permit was submitted to our side over here in the vacation rental program, we then, yes, would then have one, if it was just the permit submitted, we would have denied it saying it's incomplete because not all the paperwork is there as well of maybe, hey, there's a citation on this property. Now, if that um, TOT permit was sent to finance and was returned, I can't say why it would have been returned. Um, I don't know if there would have been a note attached to that return, if that's something that came from finance. Um, so it depends on where that was printed from and sent to. That's what I would uh, believe to say. All right. Thank you. So, all right. At this point, um, uh, we are going to close the public testimony period and open it up for board discussion. Uh, if anyone would like to go first, uh, yes, do you have one more comment? And please be brief because you've used up your time. Um, I am quoting 
from the um, actual uh, Palm City of Palm Springs site for applying for a vacation rental or home share registration certificate. Number three on the on this says submit a transient occupant occupancy tax TOT permit application for new application only. If you're renewing, this form is not required. This is specifically requiring a TOT. As it's a requiring the application. Yes, and so when we sent in the application, it was returned. So this is, can I yeah. just, can I interrupt right. and say that this isn't really relevant? Yeah, I so. Think, I feel like this is a redirect and it's not a good tactic. Right, That's so. That's what we're here to talk about. Thank you, Vice Chair Kane. So, all right, I appreciate the, your, uh, the information you're providing. Vice Chair Kane is absolutely correct. Whether or not there was a TOT permit is not the issue here. The issue here is that it was an unregistered vacation rental. Um, and so we appreciate your testimony. And at this point, we're going to add uh, the board is going to discuss based on the testimony we heard both from the appellant and the city. Um, and I would like to start with Mr. Hedrick, if you have any discussion points. Uh, I don't think we have any choice in this case uh, and no questions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Basili. No questions. Any comments? <clears throat> No comments. <laughs> Vice Chair Kane. My comment, you know, is simply that we have a really, really strict vacation rental ordinance and I'm preaching to the choir. Um, guys, I'm speaking to the folks who don't sit on this board and we don't have a lot of wiggle room. And these are perfectly reasonable things to come and tell us uh, uh, about your circumstances, but we're um, here to do like one job and one job only as horrible as that might seem. <laughs> and so while we appreciate what you do for the city of Palm Springs and like, we're super glad you live here and you are bringing more residents and you're bringing art and joy, uh, we aren't in a position to reward you, <laughs> unfortunately for that. So uh, I just needed to get that out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Moses, any discussion points? Mr. Moses, if you are speaking, you are muted. All right, if um, I'm going to assume he has nothing uh, to add it yet. If he does, uh, we'll come back to him. So my perspective is this, um, you know, that's uh, we, we all can appreciate uh, that uh, she is a uh, great member of the community, and that's not a dispute here. Um, we everybody I, appreciates um, what she does and brings to the community. Um, but the condo rules don't supersede the city's rules. Um, and so, from my perspective, um, you know, there was a while the condo says it rents for 14 days the city is very clear that it requires a permit if you're renting for less than 28. Um, the city also is very clear that, uh, this, that it doesn't matter if the person actually consummated the uh, rental agreement, that advertising, and we have been over this over and over again, that from the city's perspective, the way they wrote the ordinance is the city um, treats advertising as operating. So the fact that um, she was willing to accept a 21 day rental uh, without a permit um, makes this pretty clear to me. Um, any other comments from the board? All right, Mr. Moses, if you're still with us, if you have anything to add. All right, um, then uh, we'll close the board discussion. Um, board secretary, if, uh, I'm sorry, we need a motion, I apologize. If uh, somebody, uh, one of the board members can make a motion and- well, Can I be heard now? Yes. I finally figured out what was wrong, I apologize. Two things, may I know the name of the attorney? Uh, I think it's showing on the screen. Yes. 
Okay, I don't have it. All right. But all right. Secondly, uh, my name is you, Robert Giolito. Well, my second point was going to be that because she intends to honor this, the rule anyway, the, the permanent bar of using uh, of having a vacation rental short term uh, is not a penalty at all, in effect. So the only penalty is the five thousand dollars. The city will be, I'm sure, will be glad to work out an easy payment schedule with her if if that's uh, something that's important. All right, anything but, additional? How do we know the name of the lawyer? It's uh, showing under their photo. All right, so um, if anything additional, Mr. Moses? No. All right, thank no. you. Uh, so at this point, uh, can we get a motion? So moved. What do you what do you what is your I'm motion? I'm moving that the, the, that we affirm the the uh, the, the city's uh, decision to uh, to have to fine and uh, a five thousand dollar fine and to permanently bar short term rentals in the future. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Board Secretary. Can you please call the vote? Board Member Moses. Do you see me? Um, yeah, aye. Board Member Hedrick? Aye. Board Member Basili? Aye. Vice Chair Kane? Aye. Chair Panessa? Aye. Motion carries 5 0 to adopt the resolution upholding the administrative decision. All right. I would like to thank everyone for their time and effort on this case. Um, uh, the appellant, you will get an official notification from the city uh, regarding this. Um, as Mr. Moses mentioned, the city will work with you on the fine in terms of uh, timing. Um, and this also does not affect your ability to uh, continue to rent on a 30 day basis. Uh, again, I thank everyone for their time and effort. Uh, we are gonna move on to the next case. Uh, the next item is number five. It is the appeal of the permanent ineligibility to operate a vacation rental in the city of Palm Springs and the administrative fine of $5,000 for operating an unregistered vacation rental property located at 1910 North uh, Alamos Road. Uh, Board Secretary, can you please ensure that the city staff and the appellant understand that their testimony is under oath? City staff, appellants, and any other individual who desires to testify under this appeal hearing, under the laws of perjury, if you choose to speak, you hereby accept and acknowledge that your testimony shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to ask for the staff, city staff report. Good evening. Thank you, uh, Chair, uh, Vice Chair, Board Members, City Staff, appellants on the call. My name is Patrick Clifford with the Department of Special Program Compliance, uh, where we oversee uh, the vacation rental compliance program here in the city of Palm Springs. Uh, before you this evening is a staff report regarding the property located at 1910 North Los Alamos Road here in Palm Springs. It is found um, that the property located at 1910 North Los Alamos Road was operating as a vacation rental without a short-term vacation rental certificate. Um, the code officer's findings and the elements that led to the citation issued on July 29, 2021 is located in your staff report. Uh, code officer Williams is on the call this evening to give further testimony on the investigation, and I would like to invite him to speak. Thank you. Dave, you are muted again. Sorry about that. I am Dave, David Williams, Code Compliance Officer with the City of Palm Springs. And on August 22nd, 2021, a lead was received through the Department of Special Program Compliance voicemail system that reported a listing on Airbnb that was not in compliance. The lead um, also included the advertisement number in the voicemail, which was 49528329 on Airbnb and that is located on page 23 of your packet. The advertisement described the property as a four bedroom, three bathroom home. At that time, I sent a booking inquiry to the property host, SPAN. 
at 10.47 a.m. In the inquiry, I asked Span if the home was available for the dates of September 19th to September 26, 2021, as I would be in Palm Springs for a wedding. That is page 32 in your packet. At 10.51 a.m., Span, Span, so sorry, Span replied, Good morning, Dave. Yes, it is. I will send you the pre-approval now. I responded shortly thereafter with, perfect. I will book it as soon as I get home from work this afternoon. Looking forward to the visit. Do you think the pool needs to be heated that time of the year? And if so, is there an additional charge? Thanks again, Dave. Span, Span responded, awesome possum. And that depends on you and your guests. I would have a better idea closer to the dates. It is $50 a day for the pool heat. The following day, Span, Span sent another follow-up email at 10.52 a.m. asking if he wanted me to send another pre-approval as I had not obviously followed through with the booking. At that time, I then issued citation AB0348 to the property owner, and I am available if you have any questions. Thank you. Anything further from the city? I Yes, sure, I do have one thing. Um, maybe it's a typo on my staff report. Not sure if it's included in the staff report with you. I stated that the administrative citation was issued July 29th, 2021. That is incorrect. Um, the citation that's included in your packet shows that the citation was issued August 26, 2021, um, which was testified by Officer Williams. That's how I was able to catch that typo. So my apologies, but the, uh, let my statement cor be corrected that the citation was issued August 26, 2021, not July 29th, 2021. Thank you. Anything further from the city? Nothing further, thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll open it up to the board members for questions of the city. Mr. Hedrick, you look like you had you were ready. I'm ready. Uh, my question is, the home was owned by William Joseph Spann, Jr. But your citation is to William Joseph Spann. And, I, and if you read the whole packet, uh, there has been a change in ownership because of a death of Jr. So was Jr. the owner of the property at the time that this citation was issued? or was senior the owner of the property at the time the citation was issued? The title shows the property owner as William Joseph Spann. It does not designate junior or senior. Well, that's on page 5-56. Yes. It shows Spann Jr. Oh, yes, it does. I was looking at the property data information. Okay, so my question was, who owned the property at the time of the uh, citation? Uh, junior, I believe. I could Sorry, have some if I'm reading the property profile right that was printed out by the citation, it looks like under uh, sale and loan information. So it's transfer date of 2-12-2019, seller Span Jr., William Joseph. Um, from the property data, it looks like current owner was William Joseph Span. Senior. It doesn't say senior, just says William Joseph Span as of that current date. Um, from what I'm reading, the junior was under the seller information, if I'm reading this document correctly. Thank you. Patrick, can you say that again? Um, with the timing of the um, of that, what you're showing as a change in ownership? Yeah, um, just from the property profile that we um, or code officers use to identify the owner of the property. Um, on that document, it says that under sale and loan information, there was a transfer date of 2-12-2019 um, with a seller labeled as Span Junior William Joseph, which I, from how type, maybe county types in, it must be William Joseph Span Junior. Um, the current owner on this property profile when the citation was issued was William Joseph Spann, no designation of a junior or a senior. Thank you. 
Anything else, Mr. Hedrick? Well, my condolences to Mr. Spann on the loss of his son, uh, but I'll wait to hear his testimony. All right, thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Kane? No. Mr. Vasily? No questions. And uh, Mr. Moses? No questions. All right, thank you. Um, I don't think I have any questions for the city at this point either. Um, so if there's no additional questions for the uh, city from the board, uh, at this time, I'd like to open the appeal hearing. The appellant is invited to speak for up to 10 minutes. Any member of the public who desires to speak on this appeal hearing shall have up to three minutes to speak. And if any member of the public testifies, the appellant will be invited to provide a rebuttal for up to additional two minutes. Board Secretary, can you please begin the public testimony period? Chair Panosa, I have no registered speakers, but if the appellant is present and would like to speak, you may begin now. Hi, I'm William Spann. Um, my son David and I bought this property in March of 2019. <clears throat> I think he was considered a primary owner. The property tax statement was in his name, as well as the mortgage interest document was in his name, not my name. Um, he did use it as a short-term rental. It was my impression that he applied for and obtained a permit as well as a business license. He was murdered in April of this year. Um, at that point, um, since we own the property under joint tenancy rules, it reverted to me, although it wasn't recorded as my property until the end of July, although the date goes back to his date of death. In the record in, in the documents. So after he passed away, it, it was my impression that there was still a valid permit, short term rental permit. And it, we used it as a short term rental until we got the notice of the citation. <clears throat> and now my grandchildren and their mother are living in the house, which was my plan all along, but that's neither here nor there. So everything else I would say was on my statement. The, my junior versus non-junior on this property on Los Alamos, when it was executed, it, the junior was left out for some reason. I'm William Joseph Spann, Jr. Senior was my father who passed away a while ago. So that's my statement. Thank you. Um, anything additional? I can't think of anything else to say other than what I wrote down earlier. All right. Thank you. Um, so at this time, uh, we'll open it up for board members to ask questions of the appellants. Uh, why don't we go in the reverse order, start with Mr. Moses. No questions. Thank you, Mr. Basili. Okay, uh, Vice Chair Kane. Just to be super clear, so are you saying that your who who was managing the Airbnb under the name Span? My son David Span. But but in August of 2021, it couldn't have been him. No, uh, it was his fiance. So his fiance, to your knowledge, was was renting it out. Yes. Okay. That's all I got. Mr. Hedrick? Well, uh, so Mr. Spann Jr. was the owner and that's when it was being rented out. Yes, sir. So, okay, I'm clear. And thank you. And um, actually, uh, so um, based on Vice Chair Kane's question, where we are, I think we might have been assuming that uh, Junior was the son, but Junior is actually you. Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't uh, think I have any additional questions for the appellant. I do have a question for the city. Um, and that is that um, if this had, this property had a permit, when did that permit expire? Don't have a record of this uh, property having a permit um, prior. So is it um, 
is it does that then follow that if there was no permit there was also probably no tot being paid that would be correct um because we would open a tot permit as part of the application process when all the documents are uh, completed and turned into our office all right thank you um okay if um uh, the appellant has nothing additional uh, we'll close the public uh, testimony period and at this point the um, board will discuss uh, the, the various testimony. Um, if anybody would like to go first, otherwise I'll go through the, the list again. Can, can anyone find a technicality for this? Please. <laughs> If, you know, I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, it's certainly it's a very sympathetic case. Um, as we have seen, you know, many times in the past. This is awful. I mean, yeah, it's, awful. You're, yeah. Um, and we're still a small town for God's sake. <laughs> Find me something, anything. I'm so sorry. This is just, this is so horrible. I'm sorry, it's totally irrelevant. It's just, I'm emoting, sorry. All right, uh, Mr. Hedrick, any uh, com uh, board discussion? Uh, no, uh, my, my uh, questions were answered, thank you. Mr. Basili, any points for discussion? You're muted, Patrick. It's unfortunate the situation uh, that happened, but as, as, um, we discussed earlier, our position is to evaluate a situation and make a decision based on that. And so unfortunately, this has happened more times than you know we can even mention. And we just have to go off of what we're instructed to do and that's follow the guidelines and make a decision. And I feel really bad that we have to make a decision this way based on the circumstances, but um, our hands are kind of tied too. We have to do what we're told to do and that's it. Nothing else, no other comment. I feel really bad. Thank you. Um, I guess I would echo uh, what Mr. Vasily was saying. We have been in this, we have, we have had cases in the past that have been uh, very similar to this with, with very uh, tragic and um, um, you know, kind of horrible circumstances. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, the place was being rented without a permit. And, and that's what's before us. Um, so, all right. Um, that was kind of all I had as well. Um, we'll uh, close that um, board discussion if somebody would like to make a motion. All right, I will make the motion um, that, uh, Mr. Hedrick, you're waving your hand if- I, I'll be the heavy. Um, I make a motion that we uphold the uh, city's decision for a $5,000 fine and a ban on short-term rentals for life. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion with the same emotional hesitancy that Justin presented. Thank you. Uh, Board Secretary, can you call the vote, please? Board Member Hedrick. Regretfully, aye. Board Member Moses. Sadly, aye. Board Member Basili. Aye. Vice Chair Kane. Aye. Chair Panessa. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you again, everyone, for your effort on this. Uh, to the appellant, Mr. Span, um, of course, we you have our uh, condolences and sympathies for uh, the situation um, that you are in. Um, the city will reach out to you with official notification. Um, and again, while you said you, I think you said you had family, and you were intent to have family living in that house, this does not prevent you from renting it on a monthly, uh, which by the city's definition would be a long-term basis. Okay. All right, thank you everyone for your uh, time and effort on this. Uh, we're gonna move on to the next case.
um, which is number six. Uh, and the agenda is the appeal of the administrative decision of a two-year suspension of the vacation rental uh, registration certificate for the property located at 2267 North Jarvis Drive and a fine in the amount of $2,500. Board Secretary, could you please ensure that the city staff and the appellant understand that their testimony is under oath? City staff, appellants, and any other individual who desires to testify under this appeal hearing under the laws of perjury, if you choose to speak, you hereby accept and acknowledge that your testimony shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Um, at this point, uh, I'd like to ask for the staff report. Yes, good evening, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, Board Members, City Staff, Appellants. Uh, my name is Patrick Clifford with the Department of Special Program Compliance, uh, where we oversee the Vacation Rental Program. Um, on, with your staff report this evening, it's regarding the property located at uh, 2267 North uh, Janice Drive here in Palm Springs. Uh, and the, and re, with the matter, it's regarding three citations obtained within a 12-month period. Uh, there was a citation issued for music on September 11th, 2021. Uh, there was a second citation issued for music on September 11th, 2021. And then a third citation uh, that was issued by uh, in, in by our office from a code compliance officer on September 13, 2021 for failing to submit contract summaries. Uh, so in review of uh, the occurrences that happened at the, prof uh, the property and the third citation of turned in a 12 month period, uh, we then issued a letter of suspension for the property with an effective date, um, I believe, uh, let's see, effective date of two years starting October 11th uh, 2021 and ending October 11th, 2023. Uh, the code officer that issued two of the citations is on the call. Um, code officer Nephan issued the first citation on September 11th and issued a third citation um, regarding contract summaries where we mailed out that citation on September 13th. Including in your attachments is uh, the, the reports for all three citations. Uh, the suspension letter that was issued out from um, the city, and then some materials regarding um, uh, the act, uh, act application acknowledgement um, from the property owner um, regarding the need for contract summaries, as well as a contract summary record that we printed up from, the, from our city records. Our contract summary record does show that summaries were submitted after the, after the citation issuance has occurred. Um, Code Officer Nebhan is on the call again to uh, further testify the events that happened over um, between 9-11 and 9-13, and I'd like to um, offer him his testimony. Thank you. Uh, good evening, members of the board, fellow city staff, and uh, members of the public that are joining us here on the call. <clears throat> My name is Mitch Nebhan, and I'm a Code Compliance Officer uh, here in the city of Palm Springs. Um, on September 11th, Saturday, uh, 2021, while working as a primary on-call vacation rental enforcement officer, uh, I was dispatched out on a call for a loud party at the registered rental property located at 2267 North Janice Drive. Uh, prior to responding to that, to that address, I conducted a brief search of the city's record keeping platform uh, that houses the contract summary submissions uh, and was unable to locate a submitted form for the current guest stay. Now, this is a brief search that we do because um, obviously the response time is of the essence. Um, so it's, it's not as in depth um, before we go out and respond. Um, while contacting the guests at the property uh, in response to my observations related to uh, the active nuisance complaint that had been received, uh, the occupants stated that they had booked the property for a short term stay uh, arriving on Thursday, September 9th, 2021 and departing on Sunday, September 12th, 2021 via the booking website, airbnb.com. Um, once I returned to the office, a second more detailed check uh, through the record keeping platform uh, was performed to search for a submitted contract summary. Um, and I was still unable to locate um, a submitted contract summary and determined that uh, there was no contract summary on file 
for that current guest stay. Um, and as noted from Patrick, uh, there, there were some contract summaries submitted that were after the fact, um, but going back for the entire calendar year, they, um, this particular property had uh, no contract summary submitted at all. Um, as a result of this, the property was issued a citation, AB0351, uh, for a violation of uh, Municipal Codes 525070H for a failure to submit a contract summary prior to uh, guest occupancy. And that was issued to the property owner, Steve Brown. Uh, so that will conclude what I have to present, uh, but I'm available for any questions that the board may have. Thank you. Thank you. Anything additional from the city? Yeah, just uh, further um, on this topic, uh, Chair, that the citation was issued to the property owner, um, 2267 North Janus Drive, LLC, the entity that we have on file for the property. This property is uh, managed by an agency. Um, in addition with that, um, uh, you know, pursuant to our municipal code, we issue citations um, to the owner of the property um, because our municipal code does state that the property owner is liable for um, actions of an agency if they fail to comply with the ordinance. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anything additional? Uh, nothing further, thanks. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we'll open it up for board members to ask questions of the city. Why don't we start with Mr. Moses? No questions. Thank you. Mr. Basili. Just a quick question for the city. <clears throat> when a city, when a property is managed uh, for, for a homeowner, is the contract summaries the responsibility of the management company or is it still the responsibility of the homeowner? So it's the, uh, the agency submit the contract summaries that they're the one that have the exclusive listing arrangement and they would be the ones that be able to um, complete the contract summaries because I believe they would have the insight of when those stays are coming. Um, so I don't know if uh, given access to the owners, they might have access, they might not, I'm not sure. Um, but from what I understand, since they have the exclusive listing agreement as from our ordinance states that they would have the first inside of what uh, which guests are arriving and departing. Okay, so the, the property was managed at the time of the citation. That's correct. I believe the agency is Desert Luxury Estates. Okay, thank you. No, no other questions. Uh, Vice Chair Kane. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I was under the impression that this uh, appeal was based on an objection to one of the two sound complaint or uh, citations issued, issued for noise, not necessarily not the contract summary citation, and we've heard nothing much about those two citations issued on the same day. That's correct. Um, you know, when this situation, um, the events unfolded in one day. Um, the first music ticket, the second music ticket, and then the third one coming from the code officer after. Um, uh, Officer Napan in our office verified there were no contract summaries on file. Um, that third ticket then generated suspension. Is there some testimony from the city regarding the two citations issued for noise? Since it seems like the appeal is focused on that issue. Uh, I don't for yeah. appeal. Um, Officer Napan is on the call and he did issue uh, one of the music tickets. I can uh, offer him his. Uh, his testimony as well. Uh, the second code officer is not on the call this evening, um, but the, the background with the second citation is in the staff report as well. So yeah, just to briefly touch, I was actually, I was present for both citations. Um, so I was the primary on-call enforcement officer for the, for the original, for the, for the first citation that was issued for music. Uh, and then officer Wade uh, was the primary uh, enforcement official for the second citation, our, our return, which ended up uh, being about two, two hours after we were there previously. Um, and he had issued that additional citation for music. So uh, related to the complaint for music, um, we received a, a call into the police non-emergency dispatch line about a loud party. And that call was received at 4.42 in the afternoon on Saturday, September 11th. Um, I was dispatched on the call at uh, just after 5 p.m. at 5.04. Uh, as uh, I believe this is included in the, um, the report. 
Um, I made my observation from the street in front of the property. Uh, with this property in particular, it has a front yard pool area. Um, so my, you know, observation um, point was very close to where uh, the music was identified as, as coming from uh, in that front yard patio pool area. Um, so when I arrived there, um, I was able to um, clearly hear music audible beyond the property line. Um, I identified uh, the song, which, you know, we don't include that. It's irrelevant to what, uh, who the artist was and what song was heard. Um, but we did observe for about 10 minutes before um, we ended up issuing the citation and walking up and making contact with the guests at the front door. Uh, as we were speaking with the guests, um, I, I think there was some misinterpretation uh, on their part as to uh, what they believed the uh, rules were for music. Um, they were under the impression that as long as it was kept within a certain decibel limit that they would be okay. Um, we did take decibel readings um, and, and those readings are included in the staff report. Um, however, the, as we explained to them, uh, the rule for music specifically states regardless of the level of volume, if it's audible at the property line, it's a violation. Um, we also, I also issued the guests a good neighbor brochure um, and I tried to uh, discuss in detail um, the difference between the rules for music and the rules for noise in general. Um, the guests had, a couple of the guests had a hard time understanding. They, um, they had had some adult beverages. Um, and at that point, um, they also refused to provide their ID to me. Um, so after we left the property, I called the property management company um, and advising the complaint that we had received, uh, what my observations were, and I also requested the information on file for uh, the responsible guest. Um, I also recommended uh, that they follow up with their guests um, as well to ensure that they were aware of what the rules were so that, um, you know, there wasn't a second occurrence of, um, of any uh, act of nuisance violations. Um, you know, related to the second call, by the time I got there, I was, I was actually on another call at a different property uh, wrapping up. Uh, so when Officer Wade got there, he did get there by himself. Uh, I arrived about 15 minutes after, um, and by that point, he had already made his observation. Um, and uh, from, from what was described to me was that there was music playing. It was playing from inside the property, but it was still audible at the property line. Uh, so at that point, he did issue the citation, which was a second citation for, uh, for music amplified beyond the property line. Uh, at the point that I arrived, uh, the guests were already um, speaking with him, uh, and the citation was being issued. Uh, and we also had um, uh, some presence by our um, partners at the Palm Springs Police Department um, to assist Dustin, as um, there was uh, there, some uncooperation by the guests at that point as well. Um, so that's just a little background on, on kind of the lead up to the third citation, which ended up being, uh, as Patrick mentioned, we, we do a, a more in-depth look into whether a contract summary was submitted. Um, and then Patrick also verifies that when he comes back into the office before the citation is actually uh, verified and sent out. And so that's kind of like the sequence of, of events of this, you know, bad weekend for this house. Anything else, Vice Chair Kane? All right, thank you. Mr. Hedrick? Uh, was anyone from Desert Luxury Estates, did, did they show up uh, while you were there? Uh, they didn't show up while I was there, but I did get a hold of, um, let me see if I noted the name, I believe it was Tim. Um, I did get a hold of Tim as I was leaving um, after, in response to the first call that we had received, uh, which that would have been around 545. And where were the guests uh, exited from the property? You know, I, I'm not aware uh, if they were evicted that night or not. Okay. So that might be a question to ask when the appellant testifies. Thank you. Um, anything else, Mr. Hedrick? No, thank you. Thank you, so, sir. Thanks. Uh, just a couple of questions. So I think you'd answer, my first question was going to be, uh, because in the information we received, the uh, appellant was saying that they were clearly in the house um, when the second citation was issued. But um, what you're saying is the music was coming from inside the house. And that is still, I mean, we understand that's still a violation. Is that correct? 
That's correct. Um, so that was the, the conversation that I had. I believe that might be noted in the, um, the report that Officer Wade had filed uh, was that while the music um, seemed to be identified as, as coming from within the property, uh, it was still loud enough to a point uh, where it was clearly audible at the property line. All right, thank you. And then, uh, did I hear correctly that um, there were no contract summaries submitted for 2021? Uh, that's correct. So the the first batch of contract summaries that were uh, that we have on record for this property for 2021 were submitted on uh, September 15th, which would have been um, two days after we had issued uh, the citation. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. I don't have any additional questions. Um, if there are no additional questions for the city, um, at this point, I'd like to open the appeal hearing. Um, the appellant will be invited to speak for up to 10 minutes. Any member of the public who uh, wishes to speak on this appeal hearing shall have up to three minutes to speak. If any member of the public testifies, the appellant will be invited to speak for an additional two minutes as a rebuttal. Board Secretary, can you please begin the public testimony period? Chair Panessa, I have no registered speakers, but if the appellant is present and would like to speak, you may begin. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, thank okay. you. Yeah, thank you guys all for your time. I appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to kind of go over this. I, I also forwarded the um, noise aware report. I don't know if you guys all got that. Um, we did. Yeah. So, I mean, we take this stuff very seriously as far as noise, everything, um, dealing with the guests, informing them about this. We, um, um, I was notified by the, by the gentleman at, at, at the 5 p.m. time. And as you can see, the meter is pretty low. And you know, so I understand, okay, they're outside. Um, and even though they've been notified not, you know, not to play music outside. Um, but I'd like to see kind of what their meter was at because, I mean, it's very low. Um, and, you know, I reached out to the guest immediately after that. I spoke with them. They shut it down. Later in the night, they had some music playing inside. Once again, you can see the meter, the red line for outdoor was basically non-existent. Um, so, I mean, this house has never had any trouble. You know, we're, we're, like I said, we're very strict on all this stuff. You know, we have a lot of homes in the, in the desert and we understand, you know, the details of this um so um so that's that i mean the, the, the owners spent a lot of money getting the house ready it takes two months to get a permit with you guys and then in one day you know a, a, a two very low volume events uh preclude this this person from renting you know again on, a, on a, something that they you know a, a lot of stuff was put into it so um I, I, and I question whether the noise was, you know, at, at, to, to the level that it should have had, uh, incurred a violation. Um, so that, that, that's kind of my take on it. All right, thank you. Uh, anything additional before we uh, open it up to questions? Uh, no. I, one thing, too, I, I know you're talking about, the, I mean, the permit, I don't think was that old, so I'm not sure about the reporting, but our reservation team puts them in the, in the Palm Springs system. The system is very antiquated. You can't see if things are in there. It just goes into, like, space. So, I mean, I, I would recommend that you guys have some sort of system where you can see what's been entered, because she claims it was checked off and entered. And um, so, I, I don't know. It seems like you guys could have the or the city could have a better system as far as that um, submitting the the rental uh, agreements and stuff. Uh, all right, thank you. Um, so uh, if there's nothing more from the appellant, we will open it up to uh, questions for you know, directed to the appellant from the board. And why don't we start with Mr. Moses? Thank you. Um how do we determine whether the noise violates the code other than by taking the testimony of the uh, the city is there any other way for us to the other guy's even here and i and i, I talked to him he said you know if i really listen i can hear some something in the house or something which just seems it's crazy you know to, to pull someone's permit for 
you know, this long for, for that. I mean, go ahead, I'm sorry. Anything else, Mr. Moses? Well, yeah, does, does Ms. Tremblay have a, a response to that? Well, I was just gonna ask if the noise citations were appealed. I, I'm not sure that they were. Yeah, they, they were appealed. That was all on the documentation. Okay, thank you. Anything more, Mr. Moses? I guess not. We have conflicting testimony, right? From the city, the, it was noise violator, and from the owner, it was pretty soft. Am I getting it right? Uh, yeah, so, well, let's, uh, why don't we leave that uh, for the discussion part. Uh, uh, Vice Chair Kane? Any... I, don't have, I don't have any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Basili? I don't have any questions either right now. Okay, Mr. Hedrick? So Tim H. is with uh, Desert Luxury Properties? Yes, that's correct. And... Uh, I see in there we are, you stated we are, we are being suspended for having three strikes. However, we believe we do, we don't believe the second strike was valid. So you are protesting the second strike. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. And even the level on the first one seems low. I mean, I understand the, the, the concept of, I can hear it on the, at the property line. So, I, I mean, I don't know the level. I mean, all I can go by is what our meter is picking up. So I, I don't know. Like I said, we've never had any trouble at that house, you know, and everything. So it, it, it's it, it's strange, but yes. And the contract that you've signed with the uh, 2267N North Janus Drive LLC is where you're taking full responsibility for the vacation rental? Yes. And did you evict the tenants after the second strike? Uh, no, I spoke with them and I was, I spoke with them. And when I also spoke to, the, spoke to the officer, they were in the thing. I was looking at the meter when he's, when I was talking to him and I could see there was, you know, a level inside. It wasn't crazy, but I could see that there was a level and there was basically nothing outside. Um, you know, so I spoke with them and they, they shut it down and, and you know, I, I don't, I don't, if, it, if it's, you know, not a, to me, not a valid thing. I'm not going to evict someone for, 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 for that. You know, we do take it seriously. And if there was, I mean, if they call, call, called me and said they're outside again, cranking the music and partying it up, I would have been over there and our guys would have, would have booted them instantly. But that was not the case. They told them to take it inside. They took it inside and if you can see on the meter, it's, it's on the inside, not the outside. And um, so I didn't feel the need to, you know, evict them when they followed the rules that the, the gentleman was there uh, pre previously told them. Okay. And the final question, uh, are the LLC members aware of this? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So um, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, so uh, how long have you been managing this house? Um, like six months, I think. Okay. Six months, I don't know when the permit, I don't have that information in front of me. And then um, how many properties do you manage aside from this house? Uh, we have about around 70. Okay. Um, is it not um, your, under, or is it your understanding that the, uh, when it comes to music, Yes. The decimal level has absolutely no bearing on that's the citation that that's a, a zero tolerance policy. Yes, I understand that. So if they're so, outside with music, I totally understand that one. Okay. You know, so I mean, it's low. It's not not very high, but I understand that the the it's a zero tolerance policy. And if he came to the thing and could hear faint music, he's still going to write us up. I, I totally understand that. Okay. Um, so I guess since you were testifying that that it was really low and you didn't want to, uh, you know, uh, when Mr. Hedrick asked about if you had evicted them, you'd said, you know, it was really low. And so you didn't want to ding them for that. But the 
uh, I guess I, that's what I was asking is if you understood that it's a zero tolerance, the volume level really made no difference at yeah, all. Yeah, on the first one, I understood that. And I spoke with the guests and they were, you know, they assured me, you know, they take it inside, you know, there'll be no, no more issues, um, which they did. And then, um, thank you. And so, and finally, can you kind of walk us through your process for how do you communicate these rules to the, the um, guests? Yeah, we, we have, um, you know, our contract states, you know, all, all the rules of the city, as well as we have them sign, sign a thing saying that, you know, they understand there's no music outside. After Palm Springs, we email them the um, good neighbor policy, have them sign off that they understand that to the, to the, to the guest. Is there a, do you do a, is there a uh, in-person? Yes, we do a concierge arrival uh, out there. So the, one of our concierge or our field guys meets the guests and reiterates things to them. And there's signs, I mean, there's a plaque sitting right inside the door saying there's no outside music. We, you know, we have the noise monitors there. So we're alerted instantly. Obviously this one, you know, didn't hit the threshold. So we weren't, um, but you know, we're, we're no, we have a, we put a low threshold and you know, we're, we're right on top of that stuff. So um, anytime these things go off, we're, we're, we're on the phone with the guest. You know, with okay. the and then uh, finally, with regards to the contract summaries, yeah. um, I guess I'm kind of curious as to how there was no contract summaries entered until after the fact. Yeah, I, I don't have to look and see how many we had prior to this. So I'm surprised there were none in there. Um, but the, our, the reservation team marks off that they've entered it. And like I said, it, it goes into their system, which is kind of an antiquated thing to start with, but there's no way to view, okay, I've entered that contract or not. So what if, whether she checked it off and was in the middle of it and got a phone call, I, I don't know what the, you know, I, 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 you know, obviously can't defend that. If you put it in, it didn't get put in. So, um, but you know that's the, the usual process. So, but it would be nice if on their side. I mean, I could write the code probably in the weekend to where you could view it, um, so you could see which contracts are in the system. But you cannot see that in the system that, that Palm Springs has right now. Okay. Um, just so we're clear, the yeah. the merits of that system are not in our yeah uh, purview. So we have no input, no control over that. So unfortunately, that's not that's not for us to to uh, debate, but uh, whether good, bad, or indifferent. But um, I guess from our perspective, the system is the system, so. Yeah. Um, okay, if that uh, concludes, uh, unless anybody has any more questions for the appellant, um, anything in rebuttal from the city? Um, the only thing I have um, to share, you know, there was questions regarding decibel limits and stuff like that for the citation. I don't know if we need to go into that. Um, you know, it seems like, uh, you know, uh, no, no further explanation, but if you do need information regarding decibels, we have that in the report, and I'll be happy to discuss that further if needed. And I just kind of second that point of clarity too. Uh, oftentimes when we're discussing, it's easy to say it's a noise complaint. And just to be clear, the citations that were issued were not uh, violations of the noise ordinance. There are violations of the section of vacation rental ordinance which states no music shall be audible at the property line. Um, so it's, you know, it's same thing. When we're debating level of sound, what, what was the measured decibel level? Um, it, it wasn't a violation of the noise ordinance which would relate to that. Um, it was basically, was there music audible at the property line, which we have practices in place to, to, to kind of verify that it's not, we're not hearing things, we record them, we identify the songs via third-party apps, those sort of things. So it's um, just that point of clarity of it's not a violation of noise. It's a violation of the ordinance, the uh, vacation rental ordinance, which is specific to music audible at the property line. And then um, uh, if I can just ask one quick question. I know we um, have asked not to talk about which song or artist so as not to kind of cloud the issue. But in both cases, the, uh, the music... Uh, was able to be identified. So in, the, in in my case, the music, the the artist, and the song was identified. Um, I'm flipping through Officer Wade's, um, and I'm I, I can't speak for for that of whether um, whether he identified the 
the the artist in the song? Um, I could just say that looks by uh, the officer notes for that report. It was bass that was heard at the property line. Um, not anything really relevant to uh, an audible like music or song. It was bass that he observed from the property line, um, which could, um, based off what the decibel limits I see that's reported on his report, might be a reason why um, it's low. Um, the decibel readers are rated um, to to measure an, an A, I believe it is DBA, where usually base monitors look at like DB, I forgot what the acronym is for that one. So C, be, DBC. DBC. It measures so, at a full zero to yeah. 10,000 hertz, whereas A measures starting at 500 hertz. So if we're looking at the decibel limits, that could be possible why, but I'm not a, a decibel limit expert. Um, I do want to kind of, we talked about the appeals. I looked up the citations that were issued for music to the appellant. They were paid for, but there's no appeal request on file with our citation vendor. Um, uh, so I just wanted to show that, that we have not received an appeal uh, for approval, just that the citations were paid. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, if there's any further questions, I'll be happy to answer. All right, yeah. uh, Mr. Hedrick, it looks like you're waving your hand. Yeah, on page six of 15, if you look at number two, uh, we don't believe the second strike was valid. So is that an appeal? So with repeal, with the regards to appealing those citations, that appeal is gonna be generated from the appellant to our vendor data tickets. Um, the appeal that comes to the board with the AAB would be regarding the third citation and the suspension of the two years certificate, uh, the vacation rental certificate. So uh, the, the timing of this is unique too, because we could have, uh, I guess you could say, we would have received appeals for the two tickets um, for music. And then we would have been processing this appeal here regarding the contract summary and, and the suspension. Uh, but he did not show any record of an appeal being received to our vendor on um, data ticket regarding the music tickets. And would there be a separate fee for each one? So the appellant would have to have paid their citation and submit an appeal form to our vendor. Um, the only thing that I show record of is that the citations were paid. I think someone said we had to pay those to get an appeal, but not this one. We paid 800 or something. If I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, we paid 800 for this this um, administrative thing, and we had to pay the other ones to get the whole appeal. So the the there's two appeal processes with the citations in the city. Uh, the appeals for those tickets would be you would have to appeal them, and then you submit an appeal request to our vendor. Um, then the, our vendor would then process the appeal hearing and uh, set up a, a date via a Zoom or a phone hearing as such like this. Um, when we issue a suspension letter, uh, it states that any appeal of the uh, third citation um, would be heard with the Administrative Appeals Board with the company of that payment of 802. So uh, well, that's, all, would, that's, un, that's unclear. I mean, our, our interpretation of we were appealing, you know, these, you know, to the noise things and, and, and that as we wrote in on the summary for the appeal. So I, I guess... Uh, you know, I don't know. I do believe that the uh, the violators, um, they received the copy of the citation. The appeal instructions are on the back of the citation on how to appeal and where to remit payment and appeal forms to. So you're saying that the, the homeowners had to appeal the two citations. I mean, not, I mean, the guests had to appeal the two citations. Correct. They were the violators and the citations were issued to them. Uh, so it, they would be the ones that would initiate the appeal process for those, those citations. But the homeowner is the one that is suffering the consequences. Correct. Homeowner is suffering the consequences regarding a third citation issued. Yes. And then the, uh, the, the suspension that comes with that. And since the third citation is what triggers the suspension, we then allow the um, appeal of the third ticket and the suspension to be heard by the AAB. Um, but you're right. I mean, the owner is feeling the ramifications of the two citations that occurred on the same day um, from those guests. Um, but then when they get their chance to appeal, um, unfortunately, how our um, regulations are written, it's for the third citation 
and the suspension of two years. Anything more, Mr. Hedrick? I'm phased yeah. and confused. Yeah, okay. I mean, it seems like we can't appeal those, but the third one is what puts it over the edge for the for the suspension. Yeah. So yeah, that was to get, you know, so we're appealing the suspension because we don't feel that at least that second noise violation was valid. Yeah, the guests are were more than um, able to appeal those tickets. Um, well, if, we're uh, the ones who are suspended, us and the homeowner. So that's why we sent this appeal in, was to appeal the suspension that was incurred on this, you know, third violation or whatever. And Patrick, you're saying that with the letter that went with the suspension, it states that if you want to appeal the suspension and the third citation? The letter states that any appeal of the third administrative citation, AB0351, must be addressed at the appeals board hearing pursuant to our administrative regulation, which is additionally attached to um, the suspension letter that goes out. All right. Because in the past, we've had other, you know, we had a whole spat of of uh, of noise violations in, uh, I think it was 2020, uh, when a brief period when vacation rentals opened up. And this is the first time I've heard this twist to the rules uh, because I think we suspended or we forgave one noise violation when there were a whole bunch in a rapid period of time because of inconsiderate guests. Yeah, I mean, it's one day and then the whole thing, you know, just two years is taken off the thing. It just seems extreme. So, so all right, so um, I'm gonna move us along here. Um, it seems to me that, you know, the city was uh, communicating that you would be appealing the third citation that the first two citations um, that went to the renters or the fines went to the renters that doesn't absolve the homeowner of the first second or third strikes um so uh we did have that period in 2020 but that was really an isolated period and um, the direction we were given by the city was that uh, the city manager was that we were not, uh, the city manager was not um, kind of waiving the the rules for that period. So, well, well the uh, appeal thing we got is very, was very unclear, obviously. I mean, if, if you look at what was written on the appeal, you can, it's obvious what we're appealing. So there was no, no, no one stated, oh, you, you, you're not appealing this noise violation. Um, even though that's what you wrote on the on the appeal. Uh, so all right, be, yeah, but thank way. you. And I understand so, what you're saying, but yeah. we're gonna we're gonna move on. The fact that somebody wrote on the appeal that you want to appeal a specific one doesn't yeah. change the fact that there were three citations. So uh, I think all three citations were listed on there as well. That's I understand that, and I think we all understand that. But uh, that doesn't change the fact that there were three citations. So if there are no more questions for the appellant, um, I'm gonna close the public testimony portion. And this time now is set for uh, the board to discuss. Anyone would like to go first, otherwise I'll go through the, the row. Mr. Moses, do you wanna go first? Well, do I wanna know? I, I find this very confusing. Uh, and I find it very difficult for how we can evaluate the allegations, which are basically the citations. Um, I would like to have this decision suspended and ask that the city attorney give us some instructions on how to handle this kind of case. So I'll make that a motion that we, that we postpone the decision on this until we've received further education. 
Jill, do you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, that's a perfectly acceptable thing to do. Um, and then I can discuss it with our uh, with the city attorney and we can provide some more direction on these specific situations next time. Sure. So, um, all right. So he made a motion. I have not heard a second. Uh, I'll uh, sec I will second that. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, board secretary, are we are we able to push this deciding this case off to our next meeting? Yes, um, if I'm understanding correctly, his motion was to uh, postpone decision on this pending further education and okay. be re-agendized for a future meeting date. Okay, so we had a motion and a second. Uh, Board Secretary, do you want to call the vote? Board Member Moses. Aye. Vice Chair Kane. Aye. Board Member Vasily. Aye. Board Member Hedrick. Aye. Chair Panessa. No. Motion carries for one. Okay, so um, that motion carried, so this will get pushed to the agenda for next month. Um, and then um, at that time, Jill, if you can give us some clarification and let's be clear, are, is the question whether or not the appellant can pick and choose which citation they are appealing? Mr. Moses, is that your that, intent? That is one and the other question is how do we evaluate noise complaints how do we validate or not or or not noise complaints uh, if i if i could also weigh in and say just because jill's here and she's going to go to the city attorney i think the issue is uh some confusion around the initial sound the citations for noise go to the guests and they have a appeal window uh but it's not something the owner can appeal. And then this third one for contract summaries is much clearer to me, of course. So those all go together and that's where the confusion lies. I, I think uh, it's unclear when the owner and or the property manager are, are they given a chance to appeal the sound violations or not? Well, those citations are issued to the tenant. I know, and that's why this is confusing. I, I think that's why this is confusing, frankly. Okay. Well, then we'll get some, um, I'll talk to the city attorney and and get his, uh, how he weighs in on these types of. Okay. And and the last question is for process purposes, Mike, do we have to rehear testimony and everything else or can we just come back to decide, make a decision. Uh, I believe we've had situations before where we have pushed off a decision to the next meeting. I believe with um, um, information from the city attorney that we can then just vote. Okay. And that's, I believe how we've done that in the past. Oh, that's correct. All right, uh, so board secretary, if you can uh, make sure that's on our agenda for our next meeting. Um, and obviously we probably should start with this one so that um, um, we get it resolved. Understood. Thank you. All right, uh, we're gonna move on. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, approval of minutes. Um, the uh, approval of the minutes from the October 27th and December 1st meetings. Uh, is there a motion and a second to approve those minutes? And motion that we approve the minutes. Second. Second. Board Secretary, could you call the vote, please? Board Member Vasily. Aye. Board Member Hedrick. Aye. Board Member Moses. 
Aye. Vice Chair King. Aye. Chair Panessa. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Oh, all right, thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, uh, to receive and file the regular meeting schedule for 2022. Everybody received that schedule. Um, can there be a motion and a second for accepting this meeting schedule? So moved. A second. Thank you. Board Secretary, could you call the vote, please? Vice Chair Kane. Aye. Board Member Basili. Aye. Board Member Hedrick. Aye. Board Member Moses. Aye. Chair Panessa. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Um, and just if I can make a comment on that, um, I noticed I already had all the dates in my calendar already, but I noticed the November meeting is actually a week later than what we would have standard, our standard would be. So if people are just um, automatically um, if it updates in your calendar, just make sure November's date is correct. Uh, if, right. I can, if I can, sorry, interrupt and ask Mr. Moses why he didn't know there was a meeting tonight. We well, have a calendar. I, hmm? uh, yeah, I, I received no information about any of these files being available, That's and true. which would have been a reminder. And uh, I had a problem in my calendar and that it didn't show on my calendar so it's my mistake and to a certain extent a process I guess well, we got three additional emails I think from Monique on this meeting in particular I'm wondering if your email is not functioning right well yeah maybe would, would the city please check with me with some tomorrow about what email address is being used and how because I, I, I received nothing mm -hmm. yes I can do that and I apologize for my failure in that. Okay, I just I just wonder where the what happened because we didn't just get one notice, we got a bunch. Yeah, yeah I got nothing. Yeah, there's a problem there. Uh, all right, let's uh, move on. The next item on the agenda is board member comments and requests. This portion of the meeting is set aside for general comments, announcements, requests of staff, and an, or any other issues of concern. Uh, from members of the Administrative Appeals Board. And I actually have one thing um, I would like to say to everybody on the board. We, a few months ago, we had a case um, that was a neighbor of mine and they had three citations and, I'm sorry, they did not have three citations. They had a citation for uh, not submitting contract summaries and got a six month suspension. Um, I happened to run into that neighbor last week, and I was kind of wondering, he was kind of chatty with me, but I wanted to convey to everyone what he said to me, and that was that he felt like he was treated very fairly, and he was very um, appreciative of everybody's time and attention, and that he never felt like he wasn't being heard. Um, and so I wanted everybody to know that, that somebody that we upheld their suspension and fine um, appreciated the process. So that was all I had. Thank good you. News. Thank you. Yeah, it's, this is hard and it feels good that it's appreciated that we are trying to hear everybody, even though we don't have a lot of room. And I know we're not supposed to emote like I was doing, but I'm sorry, I just couldn't help myself. It's, and, you know, and I, I totally understand. And I would just say from my perspective is, I mean, we have heard some, some yeah. really heart-wrenching situations and- No murders though, no yeah, murders. Yeah, I mean, that, that was pretty awful, um, but unfortunately- Well, um, and we did, we did the same. And I think we're doing a dang good job of upholding mm -hmm. the rules in the face mm -hmm. of all of this even though sometimes we have to hold our nose and do it. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, anybody else on the board have any comments or requests of city staff? No, I think tonight the, the, the trickiest one was the last one. Mm -hmm. it, was a very, it was very hard. It was very easy to argue both sides of that. <clears throat> and I'm glad know, I'll, can if I can, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, that's okay. I just said, I. I I, I'm glad that we're going to get some clarification because it is kind of, it, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it seemed kind of unfair to the, to the owner. Yeah, we probably shouldn't do this. Um, 
we right, should discuss right, this discussion but like yeah i think the city attorney heard us so i agree so we'll um get some clarification next time and then we'll render a vote um okay anybody anything else from city uh from the board okay uh next item on the agenda is time set aside for the city attorney to update the board on any uh important matters uh initiated by the staff or previously requested by the board lawsuit lawsuit yes so the city prevailed in the lawsuit regarding the short-term mm -hmm. rentals so um yep good news <laughs> so there's no more appeal windows um I, no can we get a report a summary on that too because i don't know what i don't really think we know what that case was about he didn't want to talk to us during the trial or the, or oh, yeah it um you know i wasn't involved in the case i know that the, the plaintiffs were challenging the ordinance saying that it violated the zoning ordinance um and so it was determined that um you know even if it did violate the zoning ordinance, did that necessarily invalidate the ordinance? Probably not. And then um, it was also determined that there wasn't um, a violation of the of the zoning ordinance. So we've always been so interested in this and I see uh, Bruce is on the call and he's got his hand up. Um, I know he's uh, very um, close to this and can probably fill us in on a little info. Thank you, Jill, if I may. Um, it was a uh, amazingly horribly long lawsuit started in June of 2017 and the appeals court upheld the trial judge, which is the single judge and the appeals court is three judges, basically saying that Palm Springs ordinance designating vacation rentals as ancillary and secondary uses of a residence are legal. And that was the whole argument is if you don't live in the home uh, full time, but you want to um, you know, make it available as a secondary use, is that valid? And that's what they tried to challenge on and they lost. And uh, you know, good for Palm Springs and for other cities who wish to adopt our type of ordinance, um, it is legal. And uh, the zoning arguments really had very, very little merit. Um, and there is no avenues left for them to uh, appeal to. They did not file to the Supreme Court of California, the California Supreme Court within 10 days they had, and they didn't do it. So we do not have the final ruling saying case closed, uh, but that will come as soon as the appellate court clerk can handle that. Bruce, who was the they? Who, who were the people that brought the suit? The they was a group started in 2015 and 2016 called Protect Our Neighborhoods. Is it an incorporated California? Uh, it's Sorry, it's a corporation of, you know, filed as a California corporation, okay? And um, the original officers and proponents who launched this whole thing uh, after Measure C, they sold their houses and they moved. And they no longer are residents of Palm Springs. And so there are three other names listed on the Statement of Information for the corporation. Um, and really, honestly, I don't know who they are. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, but that's that. And um, go ahead. Can we work towards amending the ordinance? Great question. So our city council and our city manager have been restructuring how the decisions are made and what topics can come up on what. The city was clearly over the last two or three years, and this is political, not legal, okay? You know, was um, kind of in a frantic mode all the time you know, somebody complains about this and they direct the city manager to do that. And we've changed city managers and the city manager now is looking for a, uh, 
a, a better list of priorities on what the council, the city manager and the staff should be doing in a given year, okay? And it was called a strategic visioning plan. And they had uh, two eight hour meetings in private going through this. And they have now released that and it's uh, uh, coming up on the agenda again. So to answer your question, things are changing so that we're not trying to attack everything at once, okay? But um, vacation rentals, I have heard from certain city council members, we do need to go and revisit this, okay? Even tonight, we all heard edge cases we had never thought of when that ordinance was put together in 2017. What happens if you get two music citations and a lack of contracts in one weekend? How does this work? Okay. And so I take uh, copious notes in a file with potential ordinance changes. And I've recorded these tonight from, you know, your questions, which were really good questions. You know, I mean, it's important that um, you be given a roadmap on what to do, even with these extreme edge cases. What happens if you get three citations in a weekend, okay? That was not addressed in our original ordinance. And I'm not saying it's uh, legal or illegal. That's for Jill to interpret. But I think we could provide you with better clarity if we get a chance to uh, think this through and you know, direct you into you know, things the ordinance doesn't cover. Does that make sense, Jocelyn? Yeah, yeah. it does. It's just a matter of also like sort of process. We've we've had these conversations and we're told you gotta wait. We've got our list of issues as well. So yeah. it's just a question mark. And I, it, I, you don't, I don't think, I mean, it sounds like, okay, we can approach this again. We can approach this again, but again- and do we all Do we all know the difference between unlawful and, in, and illegal? Unlawful is contrary to the law. Ill eagle is a sick bird. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. The one other thing I want to just tell you while I have the opportunity, please, is you've had to deal with, in the last two years, so many issues over, sorry for the uh, dog we're babysitting. Um, Um, we've had to deal with uh, sad situations of people, you know, having houses and we're not aware of our ordinances. And so uh, together with uh, Patrick Clifford and with Veronica Goodhart, we have really crafted a very strong worded warning postcard that will be sent to the tax address of every person who owns a home in Palm Springs. And you can't miss it. I mean, warning. You can't rest, rent less than 28 days or less, okay? Um, not in legalese, very plain English, because we want to avoid your having to deal with people saying, oh, I didn't know, okay? Yeah. And so, um, Thank you for your service and the work. I know it's really hard, but, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, I mean, we need to help you make it easier to realize you were warned. Okay. Can I leave it at that? And I'll uh, be quiet and thank you for everything you do. Thank you for what you do as well. Thank you. Um, and then last but not least, uh, board secretary, if you have any announcements for us. I have no announcements. Um, your next meeting is scheduled for February 23rd. Um, at this time, it looks like our backlog is pretty manageable. That's why you only see one meeting per month on your 2022 schedule. Great. All right, thank you everyone. Uh, if we have a, um, Bruce, what are you smoking there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <you're... laughs> oh my God, I smoke. 
but I always tried it off camera and I forgot. <laughs> I thought, I thought oh it was me. We, it was me. <laughs> uh, oh, no, and I need to lower my hand. So I need any more attention. Okay, there you go. That was amazing. That was amazing. <laughs> That is like the perfect ending to one of these meetings. <laughs> All right, can we get a motion to adjourn, please? I just want to say it's not a joint. Oh, um, sure. I hear it. Oh, well, I can hook you up. <laughs> no, thank so you. Moved. Thank you. I'll, I'll, move for, Bye. I'll move for adjournment, but it was really an interesting meeting. Yeah. All right, thank you, everyone, for your time thank and you. effort. Uh, we will see you next month. Bye. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank <laughs> you.